What's good, y'all? But Ross back at again with another video. So, I want to check out worst WWE Hell in a Cell injuries and mistakes. We're going to be checking out Hell in a Cell this weekend between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. And I'm looking forward to it. It's probably one of the most recent Hell in a Cells that deserve this type of match we've had in a few years. And I think it's going to be a bloody great time. So, we're going to check out some of the instances where injuries and botches happen in the most infamous dangerous structure that WWE has produced. So, we're going to check this out. Should be a good one. Let's get right into it, man. Eight of the biggest Hell in a Cell botches and mistakes. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Number one, Finn Balor gets busted open at WrestleMania 39. Yep. Now, the payoff to the extended rivalry between Finn Balor and Edge took place at WrestleMania 39, and to mark the occasion, WWE would bring back the Hell in a Cell. There was a ton of hype heading into the match, yes, especially with Balor bringing back his demon persona. However, most of the online discourse following the match related to Edge winning, uh -huh. as well as a botch that seemed to ruin the momentum and pacing of the match. And that bot saw Balor get hit straight oh. in the face with a ladder, and this led to Balor suffering a very nasty cut. Ooh. Balor would reflect on the botch during an appearance on What's the Story, and this is what the inaugural Universal Champion had to say. I turned around and I thought, no problem, it's coming straight up at me. I'll just put my hands out. So I put my hands up, but the rungs of the ladder went straight through the gaps of my hands. Mm. So the ladder's still coming. I'm like, there's a ladder still coming. Why is the ladder still coming at me? I've got my hands up. Why are my hands blocking it? A Balor would then describe this scene as a waterfall oh. of blood. And then at the last second, I just dropped my chin and it got me in the head. I thought, Ooh. ow, that stung. But it wasn't a bad bang or anything. It wasn't a concussion. It wasn't like I went out for a minute. It was nothing. And then I went down and went, whew, that was weird. And then I went on my back. So I rolled over onto all fours. And then I see the waterfall of blood just drip, 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 drip. Now this wound had to go down as one of the nastiest cuts in Hell in a Cell Bats. history. As the aftermath of the cut is even too extreme <laughs> for us to show on YouTube. Yeah. Number two, Bailey. Yeah, gets bro. He, he, they, I, I. It did ruin the pace of the match because it's the Hell in a Cell structure, and you know they essentially stopped it to try to stop the bleeding as much as possible. They didn't even want to show it, which it, it, it definitely obviously made people you know feel like it ruined the pace but in that situation i get it because it wasn't it wasn't a planned spot it wasn't a blade job he legit got cuts gashed open he had to get staples it wasn't stitches he had to get staples and they tried to you know temporarily close it up because if he didn't he would have lost a lot of blood like that was a lot of blood he could have potentially lost and it could have been dangerous for both in, in both individuals so i get why it it plays into the fact ultimately that hell in a cell is a dangerous structure dangerous match that sometimes you know people get really hurt so it should be a last resort for a match type it's frustrated hell in a cell 2020 the WWE talent were put in a difficult position in 2020 as they took part in the Hell in a Cell event without any actual audience. The show was presented in the Thunderdome, and whilst it was awkward to watch as a viewer, the names involved did a great job under terrible circumstances. Yeah. Bailey and Sasha Banks were two of the names that would collide in a cell, and outside one botch, the match received universal praise from fans and critics alike. The botch occurred when Bailey would introduce two kendo sticks into the match, and she would begin to tape the two sticks together to create some kind of barrier between the ring apron and the cell itself. It's unclear what the plan for this spot was, as Bailey couldn't wrap them together, and Bailey became increasingly frustrated that the two sticks weren't cooperating. Yeah. Bailey played this up well, she even screamed at Michael Cole, which added great humor to the unfortunate uh -huh. botch. <laughs> Number three, Roman Reigns avoids complete disaster, Hell in a Cell 2020. Speaking of the 2020 Hell in a Cell event, Roman Reigns would take on Jey Uso inside the cell. Great this match. cell had the added stipulation of being an I Quit matchup. Now, there was a big botch in the match that could have seriously hurt Reigns, and it was a miracle that he walked away without any injury. Towards the close of the match, Reigns attempted to throw the steel steps over the top rope to cause more damage to Jay. Whilst this spot on paper sounds easy to deliver, the steps managed to bounce back in the opposite direction from what Reigns intended. The steps managed to miss Reigns, which was lucky as this would have caused a significant head injury. And before, the cell almost gives way. It's funny. I forgot even about that spot, to be honest with you. I, now that he even brought that up, well, it obviously wasn't a spot. Uh, it was a botch. I forgot all about that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I really did. It was such a great match. That was such a good 
that in my opinion, that probably should have been one of the only few Hell in a Cells. And they added the I Quit stipulation. That's the only way. It was it was the storytelling involved, the the acting, the character work, seeing really how far we've come as Roman Reigns is this despicable heel that's gonna even use his family's emotions against him. It was really good. Some really good stuff. Way no way out. Two thousand. Due to the horrors of Mankind vs. The Undertaker from 1998, WWE knew that they needed to reinforce the cell when they delivered Cactus Jack vs. Uh -huh. Triple H at No Way Out 2000. There was a spot in the match where Foley would be backdropped by the game through Ooh. the top of the cell. And this was done thanks to a loose panel. However, when Triple H and Foley were brawling at the top of the cell, a corner of the cell gave way and yep. Triple H almost fell through. Luckily, Triple H was perfectly okay, but this could have been an absolute disaster, especially when it's taken into consideration that the corner of the cell imploding would have led to Triple H having the worst landing imaginable yeah. right down to the floor below. Number 5. Seth Rollins Can't Feel His Legs – Hell in a Cell 2018 Wrestlers taking bumps from the side or top of the Hell in a Cell isn't exactly rare. However, WWE must ensure that they protect their talent. When Seth Rollins took a bump from the side of the cell in 2018, it looked like WWE didn't pad the announce oh table enough, God. as Rollins would go into horrendous detail during an interview with Dan LaBattard, and according to the WWE Champion, he legitimately thought he wasn't going to be able to wrestle again. Wow. I've taken a couple of falls off the side of the Hell in a Cell structure, and I've fallen off the side of that a couple of times through our announce desk, and the most recent which was 5 or 6 years ago at this point, I thought, that was it, I'm never getting up, that's the end of it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move my legs after this. It was so painful, I thought. I don't know if I'll ever be able to wrestle again. Nope. That's, that, that, didn't even know about that. Honestly, I didn't even know about that. And it's crazy. Once again, what these wrestlers do to entertain us. Literally. Like, that's why, you know, you got to give respect where respect is, you know, earned. They're going out there literally potentially paralyzing themselves from these dangerous spots that they do every now and then to entertain us. Got to respect it. Got to respect Number it. Number six, Shane McMahon's Fall from Grace, WrestleMania 32. When it comes to panning out the announce table or making it sure it cushions a blow, it's never been more important than when a wrestler jumps from the top of the cell structure. In 2016 at WrestleMania 32, Shane McMahon leaped from the top of the cage and his aim was to land on The Undertaker. Unfortunately for McMahon, the dead man moved at the last second and this resulted in him going oh crashing through the God. announce table. But this spot should have been executed in a way that McMahon would come away with zero injuries, but that wasn't what happened. It's not clear if there was a botch when it came to McMahon's landing or if there was a botch with the table, but McMahon was hurt in a big way. McMahon would open up regarding his injuries during an interview with Stone Cold Steve oh, Austin. Oh, oh, oh. I'm thinking straight up, I'm thinking I'm going to nail this thing. That's it. It's not so much, it's not the flight, it's the sudden stop that gets you. That's when you're laying there like a guppy trying to get a breath going, oh my god, counting ribs. I cracked two ribs in my side, at least two. I was sore for about eight, nine weeks. It was tight. Wow. And I know there were some people talking about, oh, you can see the crash pad. Of fucking course you should see the crash pad expanding out as he hit the fucking announce table. And he still cracked some ribs. Of course. That's insane. And the fact, if you watch the Mr. McMahon documentary, he, he did all of that just to get a hug just to get an i love you from his dad from vince bruh he was willing to do that countless times and he did that and that's all he ever wanted he did he literally jumped off the sale just to entertain us and just to get the love and appreciation from his dad bro what are we talking about and he still cracked two ribs number seven mick foley counts to three hell in a cell 2018 the main event of Hell in a Cell in 2018 received widespread criticism. The Hell in a Cell used to be a match type that ends rivalries, yet in 2018, WWE decided to end the match in a no contest. Yeah, the match featured stupid. Braun Strowman facing Roman Reigns for the Universal title inside Hell in a Cell. And to make the match extra special, WWE added WWE legend and Hell in a Cell veteran Mick Foley as a guest referee. Unfortunately, Foley wasn't able to change the perception of the match, and it also didn't help that he botched a key spot. During the match, Strowman would hit Reigns with a choke slam, and Foley accidentally counted to three. 
This was covered up directly on commentary uh -huh. by being labeled as a very close two count, but fans were fully aware that Foley <laughs> had messed up a big. I remember this. He, this was a this was a bad one, bro. This was this was fucking awful. The whole Brock thing, all of this was just awful. I I for, sometimes I forget stuff, but mentally it gets pushed out of my brain that I don't want to remember it. So when it gets brought up in a video and I remember it, I was like, damn, I forgot about this. Oh, it makes sense why I forgot about this, because this shit was bad. Big way, and Foley's face indicated that he knew that he was likely to be called out on it afterwards. Luckily for Foley, the non-finish involving Brock Lesnar interfering overshadowed his botch, and by the time he came back through the curtain, the focus was probably on the negative fan reception to the main event finish. Yes, it was and number stupid. Eight, Tim White bumps too hard, Judgment Day 2002. Referee bumps in Hell in a Cell matches yep. are a commonplace, <laughs> and in 2002, Tim White took a botch bump that changed his career forever. The idea was that White would take a bump into the side of the cell structure during the Chris Jericho vs Triple H bout, however, White managed to botch this by putting too much force into the bump, and he was seriously hurt as a result. Uh -huh. White's shoulders were so messed up following the match that he would have to take a leave of absence from his referee duties, and when he eventually returned in 2004, he re-injured his shoulder in the first match back. When White passed away, Jericho took to Instagram to share a tribute to White and he discussed the match itself. Timmy told me to throw him into the cage as hard as I could, so it looked real. He took that bump so effing hard that he tore out his shoulder and Ooh. never reffed again. I felt awful, but he always said to me, I told you to throw me into the cage hard. You did exactly what I asked uh -huh. you to do. Now let's go have a beer. This is one of those hundred stories that I could tell about this great man. I will miss him forever. The wrestling biz will never see another man this loyal and this proud to be a part of the business Damn. and to be one of the boys. But hey, have, man. And and I think that's the end of the video. Eight of the biggest and, and that's the thing. He knew. He, you know, he said it himself. I told you to do it. Obviously, he didn't you know, intend for him to get hurt like that. But he said, hey, launch me into it. I want it to look real. The ref spot should look real. And unfortunately, it was too real to the point where he ended up getting injured. And uh, he has no regrets but I, about that because that's what it would meant to be a part of the wrestling business. You want everything that's happening in that ring, even involving the referees, to have a sense of realism. So you need to find a way to make sure the ref is incapacitated for a short amount of time. There you go. And he understood that, he knew that, and it was unfortunate he got injured, but, uh, you know, he didn't get mad at Chris. He's like, bro, I told you to do it, you did it, let's get something to drink, man. Rest in peace to him, man. And it just shows you the respect that, you know, these wrestlers, referees, everyone involved in the business, that, the, you know, they deserve it to entertain us. Comment down below, let me know what's your favorite Hell in a Cell match of all time. It feels good to be able to talk about another Hell in a Cell. So you let me know what was your favorite one of all time. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.